Look, I get it. You want to be rich. You want a vault of gold coins like Scrooge McDuck that you can swim in. You wish you had enough cash to have a McDonald's in your mansion. Well, at least you did back when you were a kid. And you want that kind of money that means you can go and tell your boss to do one. I am quitting this job today. All right, maybe not right now, but in a few years, right? You've been told that you need to get into this thing called investing, and this is where fortunes are made. Gates, Buffett, Bezos and Zuck may have made massive companies, but until they hit the stock market, their wealth wasn't secured. And it's only once you sell those shares on the open market that they can really become something pretty crazy. Now, for those of us who haven't yet secured billionaire status, we're told that we have to get our slice of the pie and get ourselves invested, obviously on a smaller scale. And thankfully, there's this proven route that means we don't even need any knowledge about profits, cash flows, and debt. All we need to do is invest everything we have into index funds, these relatively new types of investments that have shot up in popularity over the past 50 years or so. And it's no surprise why they've been so popular when we just remind ourselves of the stats. All of those high-paid, fast-talking fund managers, when given our hard-earned money, find it almost impossible to get back more than the returns of the market. So let's just break that down. Of the tens of thousands of public companies that you can invest in, almost nobody, or at least a very small selection of people, can choose the right companies that end up making lots of money. They can pick and choose, have as many or as few as they like, yet they still find it hard to beat the collective average of the whole market. And that's before we've even spoken about the fees that they charge, because, I mean, after all, someone's got to pay for their holiday homes, and that bright red Ferrari is not going to pay for itself. The problem is though, when you look at Gates, Buffett, Bezos and Zuck, they didn't exactly get rich by investing into index funds. They went all in and made returns in the hundreds of thousands of percent, which is loads more than you would have got if you've invested into index funds. So why are we promised that we can achieve millionaire status with index fund investing? It almost seems too good to be true. Article after article and YouTube video after YouTube video telling us just to stick to the basics and we'll be fine. Leave the stock picking to the smart people and everyone with money. And you're not good enough for that. I'll just show you what I mean when we run the numbers. Let's say you're going to invest for 30 years with £200 or $200 every single month. You are Mr. or Mrs. Consistent and never miss a beat, investing every single month without fail. I'm also not going to just use an average here and I want to go back using the real data up to today's market. So we'll start in 1992 and get cracking. I'm also going to say that we'll increase our £200 with inflation and I'm going to adjust the returns for inflation too, because we have to be honest here and say that a million quid in a few decades time isn't exactly going to get us anywhere near what it does today. I'm just going to use the US total stock market here because the data is easy to get hold of. So now let's see the results and how many millions we're going to have. Honestly, this is going to be so great. And show results. Hmm. So 220,000 after all of those years in real terms. Did I put the numbers in wrong or something? Hmm. Nope, all seems to add up I'm afraid, so sorry about that. What good is that gonna get us? We could take out 20,000 pounds per year for just 11 years and then we'd have nothing left. Or we could keep it investing and hope the returns of the future give us something good. Even that trusty 4% rule would mean that we'd only be able to actually take out about 8,000 pounds a year, which is what? Just over the amount that the current state pension gives? So it's not exactly life-changing, is it? What was the point of investing your whole working life if it just all ends up like this? Now, apparently in the UK right now, to live comfortably in what the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association call a moderate retirement, a single person needs £23,300 and a couple would need £34,000. And this isn't exactly anything to be flashy. This just means that you get all your bills covered, you can spend a bit of money on clothes and food, and you're allowed to have a holiday for a couple of weeks somewhere in Europe lucky you. So we do almost get there then with two people. If they both did this investment plan and both got the full state pension, we're not too far off, but where are the millions? You were promised millions by these YouTubers with their awful clickbait style thumbnails. Just forget about that one. I mean, I'm allowed some artistic license, right? Get away, get away. Just for fun then, how do we actually get there? And on that example before, let me tweak the numbers so we actually end up with a million quid in real amounts, not just before inflation, because that is kind of cheating. So just bear with me and with the power of editing, when I click my fingers, the amount will be revealed on screen how much you would have needed to invest from 1992 until this present day to have a million pounds in your investing account. What did you think then? Did you reckon it would be more or less than that? 880 pounds a month adjusted for inflation through 30 years of investing and then also reducing your returns for inflation too. So we're being pretty strict here and you end up with just over a million pounds and a little bit of change. Put that into perspective, I know that's a huge fortune to invest for pretty much anyone around the world. 
Now, you might be able to do it with a couple, that might be easier, but that is still some real hard work and dedication through some major market crashes, not even stopping to catch your breath at all. In fact, you even have to see your portfolio getting cut almost half in value at some point. And honestly, I'm not sure many people could actually do that. So here's your actual returns. And I like using the real data because the long-term average of 9% can be a bit misleading figure that most of the market never really delivers that number. It much prefers to take on a ride of a lifetime, some crazy highs and some terrible crashes along the way. Anyway, what am I trying to say here? Well, I'm kind of just making this video almost as a future note to myself that justifies why using index funds is the way forward. Now, none of us know the future and nothing's promised and there's no guarantees at all that we'll make any returns in the next few years, even decades by investing. The old line that past performance is not a reliable indicator for future results just springs to mind, doesn't it? Just because the long term's done well doesn't mean we have to get the same returns in the future, at least over the next few years. The only thing that an index fund promises to give you is the return of the market minus fees. I think I'll forever have John Bogle in my head when I say that line. He was a true advocate of getting more people invested this way. Now, just for fun, let me run the same example again, but I'll pick one of the best performing stocks long term, Amazon. We don't get the exact amount of years, but we'll say that you started your £880 or dollars every month into the stock since it went public all the way back in 1997. Although for some reason, this tool only lets me go back to 1998. But anyway, let's see where this one takes us. After all is said and done, up to the end of 2022, you would have had a fortune of £5.3 million. Very nice indeed. Good work. Now, the only issue is this is amazing hindsight investing where we pretty much know the outcome. And just look at the pain you've had to put yourself through. You would have seen your account value at its lowest point be 93% down. And after that amazing first year performance, as you can see here, imagine trying to push through that. You can have all the conviction you want in the stock, but how many people could have really held on through that time? And in truth, very few people did. And that is just the nature of investing. A lot of this comes back to you and how much you can take. And really, is all of that worth the pain? I'm not so sure. Speaking of pushing through the pain, on a random note, I keep seeing these videos on YouTube from the Slap Championships or whatever it is. There is no amount of money that you could pay me to stand there, take a hit like that. I mean, just look at this guy's face. To be honest, I bet a lot of investors feel like that after the year we've had. There's also a clip where this woman is so out of it, she does a forward roll. She's probably used to be a Peloton investor. Anyway, I'm not trying to say that you can't make money investing with index funds. That's not the purpose of the video at all. I just want to kind of bring us back down to earth to get our expectations set up. Because if we go into investing thinking that we're going to double our money every year, we're going to be very disappointed. One of the biggest factors about how much wealth we can generate with investing is always going to be how much we put in in the first place. And the more we put in, the better the money compounds and the wealthier we can get. But that's not going to be down to skill. That's just going to be down to how much you can actually make how much you can put into the market without touching it for quite literally decades. I think before you start investing, you have to ask yourself the question of whether you can do that and how you'd feel if you were looking at losses in the area of 50%, even with a safe portfolio. Could you still do this month in, month out as you get paid? And I think the reality is many people would really struggle to keep doing it. And this is how we end up in that age old position where we only buy on the way up and then we sell on the way down and stop buying. As much as you might think that you don't do this, time and time again, this is what happens. We all get caught up in the excitement and the FOMO, and then no price is too high. We buy tokens with dogs on them, JPEGs with monkeys, and then there's companies that make no profits whatsoever. History just repeats itself time and time again, and honestly, I don't think we're ever gonna see that changing unless we can try and learn from those mistakes. Anyway, what I really wanted to say was just be careful out there. Now, your goal as an investor might be to be a millionaire, and that's fine. It might be to make the kind of money where you can actually do whatever you like, or it might be just to help someone else out in the future. We've all got different goals and we're all on different routes to get there. And while I wanted to show you that the investment itself isn't the thing that will make you a millionaire because nothing's guaranteed, I did just want to show the kind of journey that you have to go on to get there. Now, I can only speak to you from where I am on my own journey so far, and I'm nowhere near the end of mine, so I can't show you an investing account just yet with millions in, and I might not ever get there. But all I wanted to do was help put it all out there, help as many people as possible, and then also learn loads along the way. You might be just getting started yourself, or like a few of you in the comments, well into your third and fourth decade of doing this, and you've already seen just what the market can do. For all we know, we could be entering into a decade of no returns or about to start a brand new bull market, beating even the best one we've even just been through. 
Truly anything could happen, but don't just get sucked up in all of the excitement from those people out there who claim to have found a cheat code that their stock is going to be the one that definitely 10x's in the next few years. There are no shortcuts in this thing, no cheat codes here I'm afraid. But I can guarantee that you will always find people claiming that they have the one, and that's another thing that won't change. The whole investment industry doesn't really align with your goals. They'd rather you bought and sold stocks all day, kept changing your minds, and then bought high price funds from the latest hot stock picking manager who looks like they can beat the market, hey, at least in the short term. And funny enough, I guess it's those people who chase the returns and that fast money that does kind of pay for the whole thing that allows a lot of us to access those low cost index funds. And even saying all of this, I'm never saying only invest in index funds and never do anything else. Just find what works for you, but go in with your eyes open and be realistic. I'm not a financial advisor, so I can never tell you what's best. All I can do is just share my own story, my own journey, hoping that it might help some people along the way. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Happy investing.